<laughs> I can say uh, without question a two-year-old's birthday party, especially one with uh, a petting zoo and uh, a lot of other things that he'll probably never remember. But it's good, you know. About an an hour prior, uh, hour prior to the actual party starting, we said, you know. Why didn't we just do this at Malibu Jacks and have somebody else deal with this? But uh, it was fun. We had a great time. Are there any nerves now that it is game week and you're going to be back here in a few days? Um, not quite yet. You know, I'm sure kind of that settles in a little bit more. More of the anxiousness, more Thursday, Friday as we kind of get to the later course of the weekend. Right now, we're still so uh, dialed in on you know each play, each each practice. Each rep, it's too um, far out, I guess you could say, for us to kind of get into that way or myself personally to get to that place. But I'm sure, you know, getting back into Kroger Field and, and getting into our first game, I'm sure everybody will have a little bit of nerves, but probably hasn't hit yet. How's the energy been this week? Uh, yesterday I thought was really good. Um, today was, you know, a little bit up and down. Um, you know, there was a lot more plays in this practice than there was yesterday. Um, you know, a lot of things kind of uh, accumulated in today's practice, um, but we, we got to be sharper. You know, we got to be sharper than we were today. I think these guys understand that, and um, I believe they'll come out tomorrow with, the, you know, uh, the right mindset and come out and execute at a high level. Yeah, I mean, he, he had some really good things in training camp at times and, you know, had some, some things he knows he can improve on. You know, and there's times where um, he has some great sets, some great run blocks, some great fundamentals and techniques, and there's some other opportunities where we're scoring a touchdown, but he's not blocking the right guy or doing the wrong thing, and that comes with repetition. And I just told Dylan, hey, man, for me to play, I just got to trust you. Just got to trust you. I know you're capable. I know you're a capable football player. I've really been impressed with the kid in a lot of ways, but I've got to be able to trust you with the game on the, on the line or to trust you to protect this quarterback at all times. How's the game planning process been going when you're getting with Devin? What's that working relationship been like? Yeah, he's been up probably about an hour before each each day of meetings, you know, to come up and really get ahead of the game plan. These guys have the call sheets. They have the information that we've already been able to come up with, as you know, from a game plan specific standpoint. Um, and he'll tell me, you know, I like that. I don't really love that. Or, hey, what are you thinking here? Could we tweak this this way? And you know, you definitely listen, right? You listen to the guy uh, who's had experience. There's some things that um, I'm, you know, strong. I feel strongly about and want to do. And there's things that, you know, hey, man, I can bend a little bit on that for him to be able to get what he's looking for. So uh, it's been a good process, kind of bridging the gap between the two of us and some of the things that we've done in the past. And um, but he's pretty dialed into this game plan. Yeah. You understand yourself. Uh, this uh, kind of goes back to a course of that. What makes that white so good? Who's that? What makes Brad White so good? Um, you know, B. White's, he's a fast kid, man. You know, he can, he, he can fly and, um, you know, he's one. You said, who'd you say? I'm talking about the coordinator, Brad White. Oh, Brad, our defense coordinator. Sorry. I didn't really hear. I thought you said B. White. Um, no, Brad's so difficult to prepare for because he's so multiple. You know, he's, you, like I said earlier in training camp, you know, when you come out against Brad and against our, our defense, we well, have to be ready for so many different fronts, so many different pressures, so many different coverages that each play is kind of just exhausting uh, just to dial something up against him. And, um, you know, you got a guys up front that can get after the passer a little bit and they give you so many different looks in the back end, which creates issues. And, um, you know, it's he, he's a, up there as one of the best coaches I've ever met and been around. And um, it, it's going to show, I can imagine, this fall. Coach Ball State is returning pre, or three pretty good linebackers. Yeah. How's your offense kind of been adjusting for that in this week? Those are the guys that we have to be accounted, you know, account for. Number 32, 40, and then the safety number 18 that will be playing as number three. Uh, those are the three best players on the field. They've also got a lengthy uh, Sam linebacker, number nine. That's a really good player as well. Uh, th that's the strength of their defense, in, in, in our opinion. Those are guys that we need to be ready for. We need to account for in all the plays. They're really fast over the top flow. They dissect things really well. They play discipline. They're tough. They're physical. And um, probably don't get enough credit for some of the athleticism that they have in the back end, even though they returned, you know, had some guys go to the NFL, they have replaced them with some transfers and some guys that have played a lot of football, maybe not at this level, at a different level, but they're definitely 
guys that we can you know see on the film as being tough guys that hey we know that this team is going to be ready to play. Do you have any feel you have for how you guys will be in terms of playing clean, no free snap penalties, that kind of thing? That's the, that is literally the thing that I got up and spoke about yesterday. Um, was, you know, similar thought process, not to your first scrimmage, but you want to come out of this thing without self-inflicted wounds, whether that's pre-snap penalties, alignment, assignment, turnovers, playing clean, and then the rest will tip, ultimately take care of itself. If you play hard, you play fast, you play physical, but you don't shoot yourself in the foot, typically good things happen. And, and that's been the, the huge message this week is to play a clean game, to be out there, no pre-snaps, no turnovers. Let's really play sharp and be on the screws. And, you know, like I said, things usually take care of themselves. Just in general, with all the movement, how hard is the, are these week one games of the portal to prepare for these defenses where they have so many new guys that haven't played in that system yet? It's, it's difficult, especially maybe they're coming from somewhere where we don't have a lot of access to that film. Um, so you don't have a great feel for some of those guys that have transferred and maybe didn't play as many snaps at the place that they just came from, but they're expected to be starters. That's hard. You know, we try to make target tapes for all of our players to be able to watch the guys that they're lining up against each week to play against. Well, it's hard to find some of that information and some of that film. So um, one of those things, like we're not sure on some of their starters and who's going to truly be playing what position and who they kind of go out there with, you know, nickel or base or dime. So those are things that we're going to have to adjust to a little bit on the fly. What did Ray Davis doesn't have like a reputation of being like a great running quarterback or anything like that. How does he do on those second reaction plays when he has to like stand up? Yeah. How does he do that? That's one of the things he's probably most comfortable doing is when he does have to get out of the pocket, move up, right. escape a little bit. He does a really nice job of breaking contain and remaining a passer. You know, that, those are one of the things that he does at a high level where he keeps his eyes down the field. He can really see things. We can get some plays off scrambles. You know, that, those are one of the things that we're really looking forward to seeing is instead of, hey, maybe he might not get the zone read or extend the play with his legs, but he can extend the play and keep things open down the field and keep some options open, which hopefully can help us moving forward. Does that go back to what you said about all, all receivers are All of them are alive. All of them. He can see the whole field. He can. You know I mean? He uses every inch of the field. And um, that's whether it's off drop back, whether it's off scramble, whatever it is, um, you know, that's something that definitely we're looking forward to seeing on Saturday. Have those guys had the burn to stay yeah. in it because he has that ability? Absolutely. I mean, if, if you, you might not be the primary, you might not be number two in the read, but he's coming to you. And everybody has to be on the screws. Everybody's got to run. There's no taking plays off. There's no dog in it. There's no, hey, man, I'm not really the primary, so I don't think I'm going to get the ball here. Everybody better be running because that ball can go up to at any point. What did Ray Davis do to really separate himself? Ray's just so consistent. You know, he's so consistent the way that he comes out to practice, plays every single day. He prepares at a high level. He's a kid that I trust to go out there and take care of the football, do the right things. And, and he's a really good runner. You know, he makes for better blockers. He really sets things up well. He understands the tempo of the runs. Um, I'm really excited to see what Ray can get, get going on Saturday as well as the other backs. But, um, you know, Ray's done a great job for us over the course of the last few weeks and really since he's gotten here. What is it about back schools? You know, they have that reputation of always getting a power five yeah. fits year in and year out. It's a good conference. You know, I was I was in the MAC for two years when we were at UMass before we got thrown out uh, <laughs> in 2014 and 2015. And you go play, and there's 5,000 people in the stands, and not a ton of people. You're playing on Thursday, Tuesday nights, freezing cold, and nobody cares. They just go out and play football. You know, a lot of the kids in the MAC, guys in the MAC, are from Ohio, from Pennsylvania, from you know, a lot in the Midwest, and people that love football. And I'm sure a lot of our players are going to be playing against guys that they might have played against in high school at some point or in an all-star game or what have you. And they know that these kids are going to come ready to play. And, um, you know, this is not anything that we can take lightly whatsoever. This is a really good football, uh, football team. It's a well-coached football team. And it's a disciplined football team that we're not going to walk out there and just go, go you know, walk all over these guys by any means. Okay, last one, John. William, we saw the video of Cole getting the scholarship yesterday. Yeah. What, what has he done to kind of separate himself in that room? What have you seen from Cole, Cole just comes to work every single day and literally just works his tail off. That's it. I mean, he does everything we ask him to do. 
at a high level. And it's so rewarding to see a kid like that, that pays his dues, that works his tail off, that does everything right, that doesn't bust. And just, he, all he does when he gets opportunities is make plays. And that's something that, you know, you get rewarded for doing those things. It's typically a sign of a good program. Thank you. How you doing? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Are there any pregame nerves or jitters or anything now that game week's finally here? Honestly, no, not really. Uh, it's been a long time since I played football, uh, so just really just can't wait to go out. First time really rocking the blue and Kroger Field. I'm just really excited. I'm looking forward to it and uh, really just can't, can't wait to get out there and compete with all of my teammates. How's the routine, if anything, changed since you're actually getting together a game plan and working with Coach Cohen? Uh, well, definitely, I think it definitely helps now that, you know, I'm a graduate. Um, so, you know, I'm not spending super amount of time on campus as I was in the past. Um, so now it's really cool being able to kind of hang at the facility with Coach Cohen and watch, you know, how he comes up with certain plays and how he sees the game going about certain ways. Um, so it's really, you know, I make it a priority to just kind of sit in the room as much as I possibly can, spend as much time in this facility as I can, and just really trying to be an extended coach out on this field for all my teammates as well. Yeah. It's really cool, honestly. Um, just to, you know, pick his brain or just – when we're watching an opponent or scouting a certain team, just kind of to see how Coach Cohen, you know, sees their defense or what he thinks will work versus them or how he wants to specifically attack them. And, you know, you could kind of get a feel for, you know, when he played the position, what he kind of likes or uh, how he sees certain things going about throughout the course of the game. Uh, but it's really cool that we have the relationship to where if he writes something on the board or if I come in early in the morning that I missed the meeting before, you know, the first thing he's asking is if I'm good with that, if that's something I'm comfortable with. And, you know, I really respect that a lot out of him. And, uh, you know, it, it just makes it that much easier to play for. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they've done great. I really do. Um, every single day they – come into this building, you know, prepared. They come into this building ready to compete with me, asking me questions. I'm able to ask them questions. And, you know, they're all dialed in. I can honestly say that every single day, you know, they're watching film, whether it's me taking reps, Kaya, Destin, Deuce, anyone, uh, they're watching film as if they're out there. And, you know, me as a starter, being able to come off onto the field and communicate with those guys, I truly trust them. And if any one of those guys' number is called, the full team has trust in them as well. Yeah, I think they're very talented. I think they're a fundamentally sound group. Uh, I think they do a lot of good things schematically. Um, and I think they're really good at what they do as well. Um, you see on film, you know, they compete at a really high level. They have a bunch of talented players, uh, a lot of players with a ton of experience as well. And I think it will be a true challenge for our first game. Are you has a reputation of giving people a lot more trouble than maybe fans expect. I don't know if it's that way from a player perspective, but uh, you really got to be on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, you got to prepare like you're playing anyone else. Um, every single week, you got to study your opponent, make sure you got the game plan down pat. Um, and really, you know, regardless of what conference they're in, regardless of what week you're playing a team, you can't take anyone lightly. Uh, who's ever on the schedule is who we got to play. And, uh, you know, we just have to make sure we're prepared. We're excited to, you know, get out onto the field for the first time, let the first game jitters go a little bit. Um, and at the end of the day, just do what we do practice play how we practice the whole entire camp in spring, fall, and, you know, we'll just let the film do the talking for sure. Liam said that every receiver is live. Everybody has to be ready for the ball when you're looking to throw. Yeah. Is that something you take pride in, or how does that play out in the pocket? <clears throat> yes, sir. I think that really just comes with experience playing the quarterback position and, you know, seeing a lot of defense, defenses, seeing a lot of coverages, and really just for me studying our playbook. You know, I, I really love this system. I, I love studying it. I love watching film on it, and, you know, I just want to relay to regardless of who's out there, whether on the front side, back side, first read, last read, expect the ball because, you know, I'm challenging myself to make sure I make every single option viable. Um, so, you know, I constantly remind our receivers that regardless of what play we have or any time of the game, expect the ball because I could be coming your way. Devin, what did you see from Cortland and Jeremy during camp? Yeah, those, those guys did awesome. They did awesome. Um, it's really cool to see that whole entire unit come together, um, especially with, there's Horsey right here, my guy Horsey, but I mean, just because, uh, 
you know, you got guys transferring in. There, there's guys coming back like Horsey and Eli. There was so much in, up in the air in the off season to where you know Cortland comes in and you know Flax and Cortland are communicating with each other on what they could do better or you know how one another can improve. And and Marcus, you know, works with Horsey and Eli is now working with Jagger, moving to center. And it's really cool for me to see coming in as, as a transfer and a quarterback uh, for just to see how much work those guys have put in and how much it truly means to them too. Okay, last question. We had one over here. Was that uh, Liam yeah. also said that this is a game you don't want to see self-inflicted wounds. So yes. How do you focus on that? How do you prepare to not have those as the weekends? Yeah, I mean, just like any game you're playing, you, you want to make sure you don't beat yourself first. Um, that's kind of what he's touching on, and he stresses it in practice. I think it all starts in practice from really ever since we started game planning for Ball State, you know, as long as we stay on sides, as long as we understand where we have to assign and our, do our job every single play, you know, that's the first step. Without that first step, you're not going to have much success. So really for us, it's just making sure we don't beat ourselves first and then secondly, making sure we're executed. Okay, folks, thank you very much. Thank but, you. Uh,